YouTube video, but I wanted to make a video about the art college portfolio process. I just want to show my pieces because I know when I was doing it, I loved um, watching videos just to get some um, information because I didn't really have any guidance and the YouTube videos helped a lot. Right. First, I want to talk about um, the schools I applied to. So I applied to, oh, there's something on my shirt. I applied to RISD, Rhode Island School of Design, Pratt Institute, in New York City, in Brooklyn. Um, I applied to NYU, and I applied to California College of Arts, which is like a small art school in San Francisco. Um, and then I applied to some other universities, but those were the universities I applied to under art. Um, so the, um, the requirements for each school were different, but for each one, you had to submit like through to apply to the school you had to submit through common app except for Pratt they had their own way of doing things and then so you have to write an essay on the common app and then um once you're done with that I think NYU um required an extra essay so that's already like two essays and then Pratt didn't require an essay for like the general application but then once you apply to all these schools you need to create an account on this website called slide room and basically it's just like an online portfolio i have to make a separate one for each school that you're applying to all right so i looked it up because i couldn't remember but so i'm gonna go through each one uh, like the requirements and then i'll show my pieces so for california college of the arts you just had to submit 10 through 15 pieces for nyu you had to do 12 through 15 pieces um, and then you had to do like another essay, a statement of purpose, like why you wanted to do like a certain art program. For RISD it was 12 through 25 pieces, but then for RISD there's an extra, it's like a challenge question. Um, RISD, it's called something, I don't remember what it is. Um, and this year it was, I think, I think it's like two more pieces that you have to do. Um, and this year the question was like, what's something that inspired, like something from nature? I don't really remember the exact question, something about nature, like something natural or from the natural world that inspires you or you had to document your reaction to that. And then you had to revise it for your second piece from the challenge. So that's like, yeah. And for Pratt, it was 12 through 20 pieces. And then you had to write an essay about why Pratt, basically, or your interest in the art program. I don't remember the specific question. Um, and you also had to, there's, because you can apply for different majors at Pratt, like um, English or writing. So they have an essay portfolio. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it was optional or not, but I think I also submitted an essay just to, you know, like, look even better. <laughs> Okay, um, but keep in mind, like, when you're making your portfolio, you don't have to meet the max amount. It just, like, it's a cap, you know? Um, so they prefer seeing the minimal amount of pieces that are, like, really well done versus, like, 20 pieces that are all, like, kind of uh, crappy. Um, and also some things to keep in mind when you're doing this to you want to have, like, a variety. You want to show that use different mediums you want to show your personality so you still want to um, include pieces that are like your style or like about issues that you're passionate about um, but you should definitely include still life pieces so you can show that you can still do like traditional art um, they like seeing like self portraits to see like that you're like reflective and stuff um, self reflective from what I learned from my experience um, and I can actually um, link my essays if you guys want comment down below if you want me to link my essays and I will um, and I can make I'm actually thinking I'm gonna make a separate video about like writing college essays and how all that is and so I'll probably include it in that one I forgot to mention this earlier but um, the order the way you order things is also kind of important you don't want to just have them in a random order i kind of grouped mine and it's also like important to start off with a strong piece and end with a strong piece and then put like a strong piece in the middle um so it's like it's not all your strong pieces at the beginning and then you 
progressively get worse. You don't want to see that. Um, so it's just easier if you kind of spread them apart a little bit. And then also, um, what I did is I kind of grouped things together. So if I had collages, I put them together. If I had portraits, I kind of put them together. But still keeping in mind like the strong beginning, strong end, strong in the middle. And I think I also start off with like more traditional pieces. Like I, because I want to show, I want to show kind of like my progress over the years. Like more traditional pieces like um, tradi what's considered traditional art. Like um, like still lives and portraits like that and then I progressively got like more creative oh and also one thing that I recommend when you're applying is to include a page from your sketchbook because they like seeing your artistic process that's um a good idea oh and also what I did I forgot to explain this okay so when you're in slide room and you upload a piece you have to write like the height and the width like the sizing um the title and then also it gives you like a little description box and so what i did was since i use a lot of the same pieces for all my portfolios i actually compiled a document um with all the descriptions so i didn't have to like um rewrite it every single time um and it was also good because when i would go back and revise it i could like if i went to copy and paste into another school i'd be like oh well I had to read it multiple times and then my statements ended up coming out better okay and I'm sure this is the part y'all were waiting for this while you clicked on this video um, to show you my portfolio okay so I will do that <laughs> okay here portrait number uno um, and so this piece I included to show my skills with oil paints and human faces I used a cutout from a magazine as a reference um, and using like different techniques like brush strokes and stuff I was like I wrote I was able to create a majestic aura for my subject um, because honestly I feel like she gives off those vibes so I that's why I included that all right um, so like the first pieces I just wanted to show my skills I don't really have that much meaning um, but then some of them do have a lot of meaning so we'll get there um, this was my second portrait, um, portrait numero dos. Um, so just like the previous portrait, I wanted to show my portraiture skills. However, I wanted to show I could also illustrate more conceptual, more complicated pieces. Um, but this conception was actually not my idea. I just copied it. And they actually don't recommend for you to do that. But I felt like I had done this piece extremely well, which is why I included it. And I also wrote that it wasn't my original thought because I'm not trying to steal you know I actually don't even know who the original person was because it was a picture I found on Pinterest and you know on Pinterest they never be tagging those original artists anyway um I actually didn't title this piece um and I just wrote something really simple I just I was trying to fill up space like I had some, sometimes I had extra space I didn't include this piece in all of my portfolios um only i think i don't even remember which one i included in because i didn't i don't like it too much um and so i wrote that this piece is more than anything an experiment with color um using the color wheel i used contrasting colors and made a cohesive piece so like your descriptions don't have to be super intense this is my next piece um so i titled it la muerte and i actually did this piece for a spanish project uh, i took ap spanish split my junior year and I t um, actually made it for that and so this be this piece speaks to how everything ends eventually even the most beautiful things have to end the woman depicted is the epitome of renaissance beauty white young thin and pure but she is rotting just like the beauty she's getting old and inevitably dies and this also speaks to how traditional ideas eventually die out or simmer um, or simmer out and then I include this other phrase, but I honestly just should have deleted it because I just try to sound fancy and it just sounds stupid. Um, but I so I'm not even gonna say it out loud. Okay, so next I included this piece, which I actually have in person, and I'll show you how large it is. It is pretty large. I actually sold it for $150, but um haven't given it to them yet, so I still need to do that. <laughs> So it's called mommy like my mom um mommy is like 
like an endearing term for mom in Spanish. Um, so I wrote, <clears throat> here I experiment with color and how it's used to convey emotion. Even though her expression is dull and even blank, the vibrant colors are able to convey the joy and the array of emotions she felt. It gives her depth while, while still making it more obvious to the audience. I took inspiration from Keith Van Dongen's portraits and I titled it Mommy because the woman looks uncannily like my mother, whom I call Mommy. And just like this page, painting, her personality is rich and colorful. She's generous, friendly, emotional, and unapologetic. All things which I strive to be. So as an ode to my mommy, I painted this. Yeah, so it's kind of sweet little little personality in there, you know, little touch, little little bit of love for my mom. I have this piece. Um, and it's like a little heart thingy mabobber, right? Um, but I called it love and light. And so this is what I wrote. This picture is an experiment with light and photography. With this picture is of my, oh, this is the wrong, oh wait, no, this is the right one. Okay, wait, sorry. So I titled this piece, Love and Light, and this picture is an experiment with uh, light in photography. The picture is of my cousin in my room. She's waving her phone in the shape of a heart. Um, the heart is a popular symbol for love and is made out of light. This moment captures the seconds in which my cousin makes a specific motion. The image also captures the love my cousin and I have for each other. My cousin and I are the best of friends and our love for each other is unconditional and eternal, much like this image. So, you know, a little bit of a personality in there, you know. And then I actually have another piece that I don't really want to show you guys because um, it's of my cousin, but she's like wearing her bra and she's under 18, so I don't really want to publish that on the internet because um, I would have to go ask her parents and don't really want to expose her like that. Um, but I'll still read you guys the caption um, because these pictures are super pretty. So I titled this piece Innocence, and so I'll explain them right now. Um, these pictures were part of an impromptu photo shoot. These pictures are simply part of an innocent teenage activity which are simultaneously lustful and unruly. When you grow up in a home which confines women and teaches them to shy away from sexuality, taking sexy pictures and indulging in our ego is seen as unlawful. So these pictures, which may seem lustful, are actually innocent and in that they were taken without intention of sexiness, but to pass time and have fun while boosting our self-confidence. One is actually three pieces that I combined together because they're really small and they all were kind of the same thing but just different um, bodies. Oh, also in your portfolio, make sure you include some sort of like body study. They want to see that you can draw human bodies. Um, so here it is. I'm super proud of these. Um, and I'll read to you what I have. Um, it just, I just wrote that it was a body study, um, and I, in these oil pastel drawings, I show my proficiency in body drawings and even conceptual thinking because I use exaggerated colors and, like, faded silhouette. Um, next I included this still life of a turtle, um, and it was based on, what did I call it? I think it's called Endangered, so it's called, I titled it Endangered Green Turtle, um, so... This oil pastel drawing was inspired by the documentary Planet Earth. The documentary narrates the miracles of nature. At the same time, I was working on another project, which was pop art. So I was researching Andy Warhol when I uh, actually stumbled across his Endangered Species Project. Since I had become intrigued from the documentary, I decided to research current endangered species, specifically marine animals, which were the focus of the documentary. This is when I found about out about the green turtle. It's one of the largest sea turtles and the only herbivore of its family. It faces extinction due to habitat loss, poaching, and ocean pollution, like fishing nets and trash, etc. So using Andy Warhol's pop art style, I decided to com com commemorate the green turtle and raise awareness of its impending extinction. Um, yeah, and so what Andy Warhol did in his pieces, he would like invert the colors, which is why the green turtle is actually like orange. Okay, now I have a still life though, and it's a still life of my keys. Um, and I actually did this like 
the day before I had to submit my portfolio because I realized I was missing a still life. Um, and I don't really draw still lives, so had to bust one out real quick. Um, so the still life is with my car keys. I wanted to show my skill with pencil shading and observation. I specifically decided to illustrate my car keys because being able to drive has provided me with freedom and saved me from loneliness lots of times. And I also think it's pretty cool because on my key, I have like a keychain, right? And I have like a little stuffed bear that my friend gave me sophomore year of high school. And I think it's pretty cool, like the juxtaposition that I have in the picture because it's like my like childhood versus like my adulthood. Oh, well, adulthood, right? Because it's like my car keys that give me the freedom to drive and like being like a grown like individual versus like having my stuffed animal, which is something like a child has. So that was pretty dope. Um, okay, so then I have another still life, which is more experimental and my... <sighs> Some people don't really like it that much, but I actually really like it. Um, and it's a still life I did of like flowers that I had on my table. Um, let me find. Okay, so it's also an oil pastel. And the oil pastel piece is an experiment with the principles of design. Unlike traditional still lives, it's quite abstract while still following traditional elements. For example, it is two-dimensional but the saturated colors like add depth because you can tell that I wasn't trying to make it like super realistic but you still get that like sense of like 3D-ishness but still like 2D I feel like um so the flowers in the cabinet are simple blobs of color but are still focal points because they have much more detail than the rest of the drawing um and the colors are also extended through all quadrants of the painting which is like the principles of design or whatever, you know. I know what I'm doing, I swear. Um, all right. Um, next, what I have another still life, but this one I only included in the NYU. I think I only included it in, in the NYU application and the Pratt application because they're both in New York City. So I wanted to show that I was already kind of familiar with the you know with NYC so I actually went to New York City for Christmas this past um, Christmas and I actually didn't know I wanted to apply to art school until like late November which is like a month before the NYU one is was due so you know I, I literally had to do this whole portfolio in like two weeks because I was in um, New York for a week so I didn't really have time to work on it there you know I was working on my, my essay on the plane um it was it was really last minute i called it scenes of nyc because i actually had um multiple but this one was my favorite so i decided to include this one um so the scene this scene is part of a series of observational pieces i drew while visiting new york city i decided to include the specific piece of times square because aside from being a tourist hub it was vibrant with color from the different ads stores foods and people it was jam-packed with such a colorful array of people, hence the bright colors. The city was always moving, which accounts for the blurry nature of the drawing. Yeah, which I'll put right here. Um, it's pretty small. Actually, wait, I think I have it on me. Let me, let me, let me show you. I have it with me. Here. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Here, this is what I included, and then here I have another one. This is the, not the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, I think it's called. I didn't finish it, but it came out pretty good. Oh yeah, I wrote Manhattan Bridge right there. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, and then I have this piece, which I actually, I think I did it just in case. I actually might have submitted it for NYU, which is embarrassing because it's like, not good um but here i'll show you guys anyway um it looks like this i know i know what you're thinking you're like what the f is that but i have been like experimenting with the idea of becoming like a tattoo artist when i'm older which i actually the more i think about it the more i want to do 
and so um so I this, what did I call it? I called it Rose and Snake you know it's pretty pretty explanatory um so I wrote that I've designed a tattoo in this piece apart from practicing this this tattoo style of drawing it symbolizes a new front for, uh, for my creative force Snakes symbolize new beginnings and creativity, as well as roses, which are about promises. And this tattoo serves as a promise to myself to expand my creative horizons, which is actually true. Um, in all my artwork, I try to do research, and that's actually something I've learned from my um, art teacher. Shout out to you, Ms. Amora. Um, <laughs> because I, I always like doing art. Uh, but it wasn't until my senior year that I really got, you know, down and dirty with the, like, busting out a whole bunch of artwork, you know, really thinking about art seriously. Um, uh, my junior year, not so much. And junior year was actually the first time I took an art class at school. And, you know, senior year, it was really, I have two art classes this year, you know, I'm going at it. Um, and my teacher, I've learned so much from her, and she's amazing. And something that's really valuable um and really helpful is that you do your research and you do revisions and you think about it you don't just make artwork like obviously you need to just make artwork to make artwork sometimes but if you're really trying to create a like a piece like a, not just like a oh i want to film my sketchbook piece but like a, a piece that has meaning you need to do your research um so some of these descriptions may sound like, oh, she probably just came up with that, but I actually, like, I thought about it. And the writing, not so great, I will admit, some of these statements suck ass, but I really did try to show that there's thought behind my pieces, which there is. Okay, sorry, that was like a little tangent I wanted to go off on. Um, also, I didn't realize until my senior year how much I needed Adobe Photoshop. Like, holy crap. Like, I to do this portfolio, I, like, got the free trial for Adobe Photoshop. Like, for, like, all the, like, Adobe Cloud things. Um, and because I was, like, Photoshopping. Okay, well, not Photoshopping. But you sometimes when you take pictures or, like, you scan things in, um, some of the color gets lost so you want to like edit it in Photoshop or if you want to combine images like what I did for my um, body study piece with the oil pastel um, I needed Photoshop to do that um, and to show all my sketchbook pages that I felt were important I um, used Photoshop to like compile them together so here they are um, so these are some of my sketchbook pages from this year. I wanted to show my creative process. Um, and my process involves writing and research, um, hence the two pieces on the lower left. I experimented with ink and pen this year and wanted to show my versi versatility. Okay, like, I can't pronounce these things, but I can write them, okay? <laughs> um, one of my strengths is portraiture, so I decided to include various small portraits I've drawn in the past year. I also have a fascination with drawing eyes, so I've included multiple eyes I concocted for my imagination. And finally, in the middle, I included an oil pastel drawing, which was an observation of neon signs. All right, this one is a collage, and I titled it Growth. And so I'll read you a little bit um, This collage is a Frankenstein creation of traditionally male and female body parts. I wanted to show the fluidity of gender. Gender is about how you feel in your own skin, it's also something very personal personal, and no one is obliged to tell you what's down there. Uh, so to portray this, I decided to use um, food symbolism. Just like gender, food is very sacred. It enters our bodies and nourishes our souls. Your body knows what foods are right for it the same way you express yourself. Your body knows what gender is right for you. Like, um, and gender is what feels right for your body. And breaking free from traditional gender roles gives us the room to grow, just like fruits and vegetables, which I think is such a cute allegory. Um, all right, and so then my next um, little artist training card right here uh, is called Erased. Um, so a vital aspect to this piece is the wateriness. I wanted to communicate that women exist and cease to exist simultaneously 
women are often tasked with some of the hardest things on earth, like being a caretaker, are never recognized um, because that's what you would expect of her. You can barely make out her body, much less her face, which is erased by a red streak. Next, I included another collage, which was, um, where is it? So it, it was a collage I made of a woman's vulva. Um, I forgot what I titled it. Um, but this piece compiles scraps from different fashion and women's, women's magazines like Vogue or People magazine. Um, and from the scraps I've constructed a model of the vulva. For being such a necessary organ in our bodies, it is quite unknown and taboo. I decided to depict the vulva as a flower. This was meant to ease the viewer. The subject is female, of female sexuality is one of discomfort. And to make the conversation easier, I have made the viewer I have made the view easier. Anatomically speaking, this has all the components: a clitoris, a urethra, a vaginal opening, a minor labia, major labia, and even a bush. Which I actually it's a bush. It's like a rose bush. Do you get it? Aha. Um, all right. <laughs> um, next, I have this piece called "You Can't Drink Tears," and this one. I thought it was going to come out better than it did if I'm being completely honest. Um, I think I only use, I don't think I use this piece in all of my portfolios because I don't like, like it looked better in my head, all right? This piece is titled You Can't Drink Tears. Um, this poster piece imitates graffiti seen in the streets of Flint, Michigan. Um, and the picture was taken of a little girl who was being given medical treatment for mercury slash lead poisoning, um, which I then drew over or painted over I mean. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. So in April 2014, mercury and lead infected water was fed to Flint's inhabitants. People, um, current, people's current source of water is plastic water bottles, which are being bought at the hundreds. Um, like even for like taking baths and like cooking and everything. Um, the local and national government are aware of this water crisis but have chosen to ignore it. Um, this leads us to question why the Flint community is being ignored. Flint, Michigan is one of the poorest and blackest neighborhoods in the United States. This piece reveals the truth of the horrible crisis and the U.S. government's war on the poor and how racism is deeply ingrained into our society. The phrase, God help us say Flint, is taken from a famous graffiti in Flint, which just goes to show that the only thing they can do is pray. Um... So yeah, I wanted it to look like a graffiti piece and I actually really wanted to use spray paint. But spray paint's really expensive and I'm not old enough to buy it and I don't think my mom was about to let me blow hella money on some spray paint bottles I was only going to use one time. So I like watched some videos on how to make it look like spray paint with like acrylic. Um, and it didn't really come out how I planned. Um, but I wanted to include it because... I wanted to show my personality because even though this piece didn't come out great, I feel like the thought behind it was great. Okay, so my last piece was called Perfect Woman. Um, and so I'll show it right here. I'm really proud of this piece. Um, this piece is about how women are told to be the perfect woman they need to look. To be the perfect woman, they need to look a certain way. So she's simply a convoluted product. product of what it means to be perfect, not even human. Perfection, however, is unrealistic. It is human nature to be beautifully flawed. This is where I derived the idea of a robot. Robots are sometimes considered superhuman and can be programmed for anyone's needs and can be tweaked at will, fixed if broken, or even replaced. I also realized that perfection, perfection, for a woman is how close she meets up to a man's expectations, through which her worth is measured. This led me to think of beauty pageants. Beauty pageants are contests where the goal is to be most beautiful or talented or perfect, and then are promptly judged. Pop art, just like abstraction, broke the status quo. Pop artists, like Andy Warhol, use repetitive patterns to highlight how ordinary things are not so ordinary. Just like him, I highlight how current standards are actually quite abnormal and horrible if you're asking me oh wait i forgot one piece i forgot one piece i forgot one piece okay 
this piece is pretty cool. Um, I'll put it right here. Um, so it's called In Drag We In Trust. So I made this piece to honor and thank our LGBTQ plus ancestors. The man in the center is a drag queen from the 80s. His existence as a queer person in the 80s was a revolution itself. The world is a safer place thanks to our older queers being their most authentic selves and fighting for our rights. This is why I included a halo. Older generations have paved the way for us and set an example. There's still a long way to go in terms of LGBTQ plus rights and safety. And in the tarot, the rose represents new beginnings and promises. Promises that younger and future generations will continue fighting and being their most authentic selves. Also, I don't actually know who this drag queen is, so if you do, please comment below because that'd be super cool if I knew who it was. It was just a picture I saw on a vintage drag queen's account that I follow. So, that'd be cool if you knew who it was. So, I just realized I forgot to um, explain um, the RISD challenge assignment. I think the question was like what's something from the natural world that inspires your like basically your reaction to something in the natural world so a phenomenon that i chose was birth or like the creation of life um and its parallels in nature so my piece was an orchid flower um and it has like a small baby in the middle right there like a little baby that's growing little fetus um and so I like if we're speaking artistically like my a lot of my inspiration I derive from Georgia O'Keeffe um like the way she painted her flowers and landscapes because it's just so subtle and just so nice to look at you know um and also because she had a lot of experience drawing flowers I was basically just drawing an enormous flower um and so the reason I chose an orchid not just because a lot of people say it looks like a female genitalia, um, but that's actually not why I chose the orchid. I chose the orchid because in ancient Greece, um, orchids were actually fed to pregnant women um, because it was thought if they would eat an orchid, they would conceive a boy, which is like super ironic if you think about it because you're literally feeding a woman like a flower so that she'll have a boy, which is like so sexist and like so the second part of the assignment was to alter or transform or like redo your piece um in some way so what i did was i took like a little piece of plastic and i painted over it and it's it's right here you can see it and this is actually like the part of the orchid that is supposed to be where the baby is and so you can just stick it on Stick it on right there and then the baby's gone oh sorry i did it wrong here we go so it looks like that you can't even tell that it's plastic maybe if you like see if you do that maybe but like from far away you can't tell um and i titled it a woman's choice so it's like about because if this is representing like someone's like creation of life and women being creators of life if we're talking binary here um and i wanted it to be about her having a choice to creating that life so that's why i titled this piece a woman's choice yeah i know i know i'm sorry i'm sorry i know Drop the mic. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you because I looked up so many of these videos when I was going through it. Um, and I'm definitely going to make another video about um, like the actual essays and the college application process um, because I also know I looked up a lot of those when I was doing it. Well, if you have any comments, concerns, or any questions, please comment down below. I will answer them. Um, all right. I will also leave my socials down below. All right, thank you.
Don't wanna be your ashtray I don't wanna be your door